It was a quiet Sunday morning when my wife dropped the bomb that would detonate our entire lives. I was lounging on the couch, sipping coffee and scrolling through my phone, while Sarah stood in the kitchen doorway, fidgeting with her wedding ring. Hey babe, she called out, her voice tinged with an odd mix of excitement and nervousness. Can we talk about something? I looked up, sensing the weight in her words. Sure, what's up? She walked over and perched on the edge of the coffee table, facing me. Her eyes darted around the room, refusing to meet mine. I've been thinking about this for a while now, and, well, I think we should try an open marriage. The words hit me like a freight train. I choked on my coffee, sputtering and coughing as I tried to process what she'd just said. I'm sorry to what? Sarah's face flushed, but her voice grew more confident. An open marriage. You know, where we're still committed to each other, but we're free to explore other options. I set my mug down hard, liquid sloshing over the rim. Are you out of your mind? We've been married for seven years, Sarah. Seven happy years. Why the hell would you want to throw that away? She reached out to touch my knee, but I jerked away. I'm not throwing anything away, Jake. I love you. I just think this could spice things up, make our relationship stronger. I stood up, pacing the room as anger and disbelief warred inside me. Spice things up by sleeping with other people? How exactly is that supposed to make us stronger? Sarah's eyes followed me, her expression a mix of hurt and frustration. It's not just about sex, Jake. It's about freedom, exploration. Don't you ever wonder what it would be like to? No. I snapped, whirling to face her. No, I don't wonder what it would be like to cheat on my wife. Jesus, Sarah, where is this coming from? She stood up, crossing her arms defensively. It's not cheating if we both agree to it. And it's not like I just woke up with this idea. I've been reading about it, talking to people who've tried it. It can work, Jake. It can make marriages stronger. I laughed, a harsh, bitter sound. Right, because nothing says I love you like screwing other people. Have you lost your mind? Sarah's eyes flashed with anger. Don't patronize me, Jake. I'm not some idiot who doesn't know what she's talking about. This is a real thing that real couples do. Well, we're not those couples. I shouted, my voice echoing through the house. I can't believe you'd even suggest this. Do you not love me anymore? Is that what this is about? Her face crumpled. Of course I love you. That's why I'm bringing this up instead of just doing it. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. Instead of just doing it? So what, you've got someone lined up already? Is that it? Sarah's silence was all the answer I needed. I collapsed back onto the couch, my head in my hands. Who is it? I asked, my voice muffled. She sighed, sitting down next to me. It's not like that, Jake. There's no one specific. I just... I've been feeling restless lately. Like there's more out there I want to experience. I looked up at her, searching her face for the woman I thought I knew. And you can't experience those things with me. Your husband. Sarah reached for my hand, and this time I let her take it. It's not about you, Jake. You're an amazing husband. I just... I don't know. I feel like I missed out on something by settling down so young. Settling down, I repeated, incredulous. Is that how you see our marriage? As some kind of prison sentence? She shook her head vigorously. No, no, that's not what I meant. I love our life together. I just, I can't shake this feeling that there's more out there. I pulled my hand away, standing up again. Well, if you want to be find it, be my guest. But let me make one thing crystal clear, Sarah. If you decide to do this, it will be the last thing you ever do in this marriage. I mean it. Sarah's eyes widened. Jake, please, don't be like that. This isn't an ultimatum. I'm trying to have an honest conversation with you. An honest conversation? I laughed bitterly. Honey, there's nothing honest about wanting to screw other people while pretending to be committed to your spouse. She stood up, her face flushing with anger. That's not fair, Jake. You're not even trying to understand where I'm coming from. You're right. I'm not. I snapped. 
Because where you're coming from is insane. We took vows, Sarah. To love and cherish each other, forsaking all others. Remember that. Sarah's voice rose to match mine. Of course I remember. But people change, Jake. Relationships evolve. Why are you being so close-minded about this? I threw my hands up in exasperation. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize being faithful to my wife made me close-minded. My bad. That's not what I meant, and you know it. Sarah shot back. I'm talking about opening our minds to new experiences together. This could bring us closer, Jake. Make our bond even stronger. I shook my head, disbelief etched on my face. I can't believe I'm hearing this. How exactly is sleeping with other people supposed to bring us closer? Sarah took a deep breath, visibly trying to calm herself. It's about trust, Jake. About knowing that we choose each other every day, even with other options available. It's about growing together, exploring new parts of ourselves. I stared at her, searching for any trace of the woman I married. And you can't explore those parts with me. Your husband isn't enough for you anymore. Her face softened. Of course you're enough, Jake. This isn't about that. It's about expanding our horizons. Think about it. We could have amazing new experiences and then come home to each other, sharing everything we've learned. The very thought made my stomach churn. Share everything we've learned. What? Like compare notes on our affairs? Jesus, Sarah, listen to yourself. She reached for me, but I stepped back. Jake, please, I'm not trying to hurt you. I love you. I just think this could be really good for us if we approach it the right way. I laughed, a hollow sound. The right way? There is no right way to cheat on your spouse, Sarah. It's wrong, period. Sarah's eyes flashed with frustration. It's not cheating if we both agree to it, Jake. Why can't you see that? This could be liberating for both of us. I shook my head, a cold feeling settling in my chest. The only thing it would liberate is you from our marriage vows. Is that what you want? To be free of me? No, she cried, tears welling in her eyes. That's not at all. I want us to grow together, to experience new things. By screwing other people, I said flatly. Sarah flinched at my crude language. It doesn't have to be just about sex, Jake. It could be about emotional connections, new experiences. I cut her off. Oh, that's so much better. You want to form emotional connections with other men. Fantastic. She threw her hands up in exasperation. Why are you being so stubborn about this? Can't you at least consider it? I stared at her, my voice low and intense. No, Sarah, I can't consider it. Because the moment you sleep with another man or woman, for that matter, we're done. Over. Finished. Do you understand me? Sarah's face crumpled. Jake, please, don't say that. I'm trying to be honest with you, to share my feelings. Well, congratulations, I spat. You shared them. And now I'm sharing mine. This is a deal breaker for me, Sara. Non-negotiable. She sank onto the couch, her head in her hands. I can't believe you're being so rigid about this. Don't you trust me? I laughed, a harsh, bitter sound. Trust you? You're asking me if I trust you while simultaneously telling me you want to sleep with other people. Are you hearing yourself? Sarah looked up, her eyes pleading. Jake, please, just think about it, okay? We don't have to decide anything right now. I'm just asking you to consider it. I shook my head, grabbing my keys from the coffee table. There's nothing to consider, Sarah. You want an open marriage? Fine, but it'll be the last thing you do as my wife. I need some air. I stormed out of the house, slamming the door behind me. As I got in my car and drove away, my mind was a whirlwind of anger, hurt, and disbelief. How had we gotten here? How could Sarah, my Sarah, want something like this? I drove aimlessly for hours, replaying our conversation in my head. Each time, it made less sense. We'd always had a good relationship. Also, I thought, we were high school sweethearts, married young but happy. At least, I was happy. Now, I wasn't so sure about Sarah. As the sun began to set, I found myself parked outside our favorite bar. 
the place where we had our first date, where I proposed, where we celebrated countless milestones. Without really thinking about it, I went inside. The familiar smell of stale beer and peanuts hit me as I walked in. I nodded to Joe, the bartender who'd known us for years, and slumped onto a stool. Rough day, Jake, Joe asked, already reaching for a glass. I laughed humorlessly. You could say that. Give me a double, would you? Joe raised an eyebrow, but poured me a generous whiskey. Woman troubles. I knocked back half the drink in one gulp. You could say that too. Joe leaned on the bar, his weathered face creased with concern. Want to talk about it? I considered for a moment, then figured why the hell not. Sarah wants an open marriage, I said bluntly. Joe let out a low whistle. Damn, didn't see that coming. You two always seemed rock solid. I finished my drink and gestured for another. Yeah, well, apparently not solid enough. She says it'll make us stronger. Can you believe that bullshit? Joe poured me another, his expression sympathetic. That's rough, man. What are you going to do? I stared into my glass, watching the amber liquid swirl. I told her it's a deal breaker. If she does it, we're done. Joe nodded slowly. That's fair. You got to stand your ground on something like that. I took another long swig. Yeah, but what if she does it anyway? What if I lose her? Cho's hand on my shoulder startled me. Then you'll pick yourself up and move on, Jake. You're a good guy. You deserve someone who wants the same things you do. I nodded, not trusting myself to speak. We sat in companionable silence for a while, Joe occasionally refilling my glass. As the bar began to fill up with the after-work crowd, I found myself people watching, wondering how many of them were in happy, monogamous relationships. How many were secretly yearning for something, or someone else? A burst of laughter drew my attention to a group of women who'd just entered. They were dressed for a night out, all short skirts and high heels. One of them, a tall blonde, caught my eye and smiled. For a brief crazy moment, I considered going over to her. Isn't this what Sarah wanted, for us both to explore? But the thought made me feel sick. I couldn't do it. Not to Sarah, not to myself. I turned back to the bar, signaling Joe for another drink. As the night wore on, the bar got louder and more crowded. I stayed perched on my stool, drinking steadily and wallowing in my misery. At some point, I became aware of someone sitting next to me. This seat taken, a feminine voice asked. I turned, finding myself face to face with the blonde from earlier. Up close, she was stunning all big blue eyes and putty lips. In another life, I might have been interested. Now, I just felt a dull ache in my chest. It's all yours, I mumbled, turning back to my drink. She settled onto the stool, ordering a martini from Joe. I'm Melissa, she said, holding out her hand. I shook it briefly. Jake. Melissa smiled, leaning a bit closer than necessary. So, Jake, what brings you out tonight? You look like you could use some cheering up. I laughed bitterly. You could say that. Just relationship problems. Her hand landed on my arm, her touch warm and inviting. Want to talk about it? I'm a great listener. For a moment, I was tempted. Here was exactly the kind of opportunity Sarah seemed to want us to have. A beautiful woman, clearly interested, no strings attached but the very thought made me feel sick. I gently removed her hand from my arm. Thanks, but I can't. I'm married. Melissa's eyebrows rose. Married, but you said you were having relationship problems. I nodded, sighing heavily. Yeah, my wife. She wants an open marriage. I don't. Understanding dawned on Melissa's face. Ah, and you're out drowning your sorrows. I raised my glass in a mock toast, got it in one. Melissa was quiet for a moment, stirring her martini. Can I offer some unsolicited advice? I shrugged. Sure, why not? Everyone else seems to have an opinion. She turned to face me fully, her expression serious. Go home to your wife, Jake. 
talk to her, really talk, figure out why she wants this. Because from where I'm sitting, it looks like she's already lost you. Her words hit me like a punch to the gut. Had I already given up? Had I pushed Sarah away instead of trying to understand? Melissa must have seen the conflict on my face because she patted my arm gently. Relationships are hard work, Jake. But if you love her, it's worth fighting for. Don't let pride or hurt feelings get in the way of that. With that, she picked up her martini and rejoined her friends, leaving me to stew in my thoughts. As much as I hated to admit it, she had a point. I'd reacted with anger and ultimatums instead of really listening to Sarah. Maybe if I understood where she was coming from, we could work through this. I paid my tab and called a cab, suddenly eager to get home. The house was dark when I arrived, but I could see a faint light coming from our bedroom. Taking a deep breath, I went inside. Sarah was sitting up in bed, her eyes red and puffy from crying. When she saw me, she sat up straighter, her expression a mix of hope and fear. Jake, she said softly, I wasn't sure you were coming back. I sat on the edge of the bed, suddenly unsure what to say. I'm sorry I stormed out like that. I just, I needed some time to think. Sarah nodded, fristing her wedding ring nervously. And what did you think about? I took a deep breath. I thought about how much I love you, how much our marriage means to me, and I realized I reacted badly earlier. I should have listened to you, trying to understand where you're coming from. Her eyes widened in surprise. Really? You? You want to talk about it? I nodded slowly. Yeah, I do. But Sarah, I need you to understand something first. I meant what I said earlier. I can't do an open marriage. It goes against everything I believe about love and commitment. But I want to understand why you want it. Can you explain it to me, without getting defensive or angry? Sarah's eyes filled with tears, but she nodded. I can try. What followed was one of the longest, most difficult conversations of our marriage. Sarah poured out her fears and insecurities, a feeling of having missed out on experiences by marrying young. She talked about how she sometimes felt stifled by the routines of our life, how she yearned for excitement and novelty. I listened, really listened, fighting against the hurt and anger that threatened to overwhelm me. And as I listened, I began to understand. Not agree, but understand. When Sarah finally fell silent, I took her hands in mine. Thank you for being honest with me, I said softly. I get it now, I think. You're not trying to hurt me or replace me. You're looking for something. More. Sarah nodded, tears streaming down her face. Yes, exactly. I love you so much, Jake. I just, I don't know. I feel like there's this whole world out there I'm missing out on. I took a deep breath, struggling to keep my own emotions in check. I get that, I do. But Sarah, don't you see? Opening our marriage isn't going to fix that. It's just going to create more problems. She looked down at our joined hands, her voice barely above a whisper. How do you know? Maybe it could bring us closer, make us appreciate each other more. I couldn't help but laugh a short, bitter sound. Appreciate each other more? By sleeping with other people? Come on, Sarah, you're smarter than that. Her head snapped up, eyes flashing with a mix of hurt and anger. Don't patronize me, Jake. I've thought about this a lot. I've read about couples who've made it work. I let go of her hands, running my fingers through my hair in frustration. And what about the couples who didn't make it work? The ones whose marriages fell apart because of this. Sarah bit her lip, looking away. That won't happen to us. We're stronger than that. I stood up, pacing the room as I was trying to gather my thoughts. Are we? Because right now, it feels like you're willing to throw away everything we've built together for some. What? Some fantasy of freedom? She flinched at my words, but her voice was steady when she replied. It's not a fantasy, Jake. It's about growth, about exploring who we are as individuals and as a couple. I whirled to face her, my voice rising despite my best efforts to stay calm. And you can't explore that with me? Am I not enough for you anymore? Sarah's face crumpled, fresh tears spilling down her cheeks. 
of course are enough. That's not what this is about. I sat back down on the bed, suddenly feeling exhausted. Then what is it about, Sarah? Help me understand, because right now, all I'm hearing is that you want permission to cheat on me. She reached for my hand, and after a moment's hesitation, I let her take it. It's not cheating if we both agree to it, Jake. It's about trust, about knowing that we choose each other every day, even with other options available. I shook my head, a hollow laugh escaping me. That's bullshit, Sarah, and you know it. If you need to sleep with other people to know you choose me, then you don't really choose me at all. Sarah's grip on my hand tightened. That's not fair. I love you. I choose you every day. I just, I want to experience more. Is that so wrong? I pulled my hand away, standing up again. When you're married? Yeah, it kind of is. We took vows, Sarah. To forsake all others? Remember that. She nodded, her voice small. I remember. But people change, Jake. Relationships evolve. I laughed bitterly. Evolve? Is that what you call this? Because from where I'm standing, it looks a lot like destruction. Sarah stood up, her face flushed with a mix of anger and desperation. Why are you being so close-minded about this? Can't you at least consider it? I turned to face her, my voice low and intense. No, Sarah, I can't consider it. Because the moment you sleep with another man, or woman, for that matter, we're done. Over. Finished. Do you understand me? Her face crumpled, fresh tears spilling down her cheeks. Jake, please, don't say that. I'm trying to be honest with you, to share my feelings. I took a deep breath, trying to calm the storm of emotions raging inside me. I appreciate your honesty, Sarah. I do. But you have to understand, this isn't something I can compromise on. It goes against everything I believe about love and marriage. Sarah sank back onto the bed, her shoulders slumped in defeat. So what do we do now? Where does this leave us? I sat down next to her, careful to maintain some distance between us. I don't know, but I do know that I love you and I want to make this work. Can we, can we maybe talk to someone about this? A therapist or counsellor. She looked up at me, a glimmer of hope in her tear-filled eyes. You'd be willing to do that? I nodded slowly. Yeah, I would, because I'm not ready to give up on us, Sarah. But I need you to understand that therapy doesn't mean I'm going to change my mind about an open marriage. It's about figuring out why you feel this way and if there's a way we can address those feelings within our marriage. Sarah was quiet for a long moment, then nodded. Okay. I, I think that's fair. I'm willing to try if you are. I reached out and squeezed her hand gently. I am. We'll get through this, Sarah. One way or another. As we sat there in the dim light of our bedroom, the air thick with unspoken fears and uncertainties, I couldn't help but wonder what the future held for us. Could we overcome this? Or was this the beginning of the end? The next few weeks were a strange dance of tension and tentative reconciliation. We found a marriage counsellor, Dr. Elena Rodriguez, who came highly recommended. Our first session was scheduled for the following Tuesday, and the days leading up to it were filled with an uneasy truce. Sarah and I went through the motions of our daily lives, sharing meals, sleeping in the same bed. But there was a palpable distance between us. Every touch, every conversation felt loaded with unspoken words and barely contained emotions. The morning of our first therapy session, I woke up early, my stomach churning with a mix of anxiety and hope. Sarah was already in the kitchen when I came downstairs, nursing a cup of coffee and staring out the window. Morning, I said, my voice rougher than I intended. She turned, offering a small smile that didn't quite reach her eyes. Morning, there's fresh coffee if you want some. I nodded, pouring myself a cup and leaning against the counter. We stood in awkward silence for a few moments before Sarah spoke again. Are you, are you nervous about the session? I took a sip of coffee, buying myself a moment to gather my thoughts. Yeah, I guess I am. You? She nodded, her fingers tapping an anxious rhythm on her mug. Terrified, actually. 
I, I don't know what to expect. I sighed, setting my cup down. Me neither. But we're doing this to save our marriage, right? That's what matters. Sarah's eyes met mine, filled with a mix of fear and determination. Right. That's what matters. The drive to Dr. Rodriguez's office was quiet, both of us lost in our own thoughts. As we sat in the waiting room, I couldn't help but notice how out of place we looked among the happy couple's photos on the walls. Had we really come to this? Dr. Rodriguez was a warm, middle-aged woman with kind eyes and a no-nonsense demeanor. She greeted us with a smile, ushering us into her office. So it she said once we were seated, tell me why you're here today. Sarah and I exchanged glances, neither of us quite sure where to start. Finally, I cleared my throat. Well, um, Sarah suggested we try an open marriage. I'm not comfortable with the idea, and it's causing some problems between us. Dr. Rodriguez nodded, her expression neutral. I see. Sarah, would you like to elaborate on why you suggested this? Sarah shifted in her seat, her hands twisting in her lap. I have been feeling restless lately. Like there's more out there I want to experience. I thought maybe opening our marriage could help us grow together, explore new things. I couldn't help but scoff, earning a sharp look from both Sarah and Dr. Rodriguez. Jake, the therapist said gently, what are your thoughts on what Sarah just said? I took a deep breath, trying to keep my voice level. I think it's a cop-out. We make vows to each other. If Sarah's feeling restless, we should work on that together, not by sleeping with other people. Sarah's head snapped towards me, her eyes flashing. It's not just about sex, Jake. How many times do I have to say that? Dr. Rodriguez held up a hand, her voice calm but firm. Let's take a step back for a moment. Sarah, can you tell me more about this restlessness you're feeling? When did it start? Sarah was quiet for a moment, her brow furrowed in thought. I'm not sure exactly. I guess, maybe a few months ago. We went to my college roommate's wedding, and she was talking about all these adventures she'd had, all these experiences. And I just... I felt like I was missing out on something. I felt a pang in my chest. Why didn't you tell me you were feeling this way? She shrugged, not meeting my eyes. I didn't know how, and I wasn't sure what I was feeling at first. It just grew over time. Dr. Rodriguez nodded, making a note on her pad. And Jake, how did you feel when Sarah first brought up the idea of an open marriage? I laughed humorlessly. How did I feel? I felt like my whole world was falling apart. Like everything I thought I knew about our relationship was a lie. Sarah flinched at my words, but Dr. Rodriguez pressed on. Can you elaborate on that? I ran a hand through my hair, frustration bubbling up inside me. I mean, we've been together since high school. I thought we were happy. And then suddenly Sarah's telling me she wants to sleep with other people. How am I supposed to feel about that? Dr. Rodriguez turned to Sarah. And how do you respond to Jake's feelings, Sarah? Sarah's voice was small when she replied. I never meant to hurt you, Jake. I love you. I just... I thought this could be something we explored together. I shook my head, and left Aaron again. Together? There's nothing together about sleeping with other people, Sarah. Dr. Rodriguez held up a hand again. I think we've hit on something important here. There seems to be a fundamental difference in how you two view intimacy and commitment. Sarah, for you, exploring outside the marriage doesn't necessarily mean a lack of commitment to Jake. But Jake, for you, it represents a complete betrayal. Is that accurate? We both nodded, and Dr. Rodriguez continued. This is actually quite common couples dealing with this issue. The key is finding a way to bridge that gap in understanding. I leaned forward, my voice tight with emotion. But how? How can we possibly bridge that gap when our views are so completely opposite? Dr. Rodriguez smiled gently. That's what we're here to figure out. It won't be easy, and it will take time. But if you're both committed to making this work, we can find a way forward. As we left the session an hour later, my head was spinning. We talked about our fears, our insecurities, our hopes for the future. 
Dr. Rodriguez had given us exercises to do at home, communication techniques to practice. It felt like we'd run an emotional marathon. In the car, Sarah turned to me, her voice hesitant. So, what did you think? I sighed, keeping my eyes on the road. I think, we have a lot of work to do. She reached over, gently touching my arm. But you're willing to do it, right? To try. I glanced at her, seeing the mix of hope and fear in her eyes. Yeah, Sarah, I'm willing to try. The next few weeks were a roller coaster of emotions. We had twice weekly sessions with Dr. Rodriguez, each one leaving us emotionally drained, but somehow lighter. At home, we practiced the communication exercises she'd given us, learning to express our feelings without accusation or defensiveness. It wasn't easy. There were nights when I lay awake, staring at the ceiling, wondering if we could ever get back to where we were. Mornings, when the sight of Sarah's toothbrush next to mine in the bathroom made my chest ache with a mix of love and fear. But slowly, gradually, things began to change. We started talking, really talking, in a way we hadn't in years. I learned that Sarah's desire for an open marriage wasn't really about sex at all, but about a fear of missing out on life experiences. She learned that my resistance wasn't about controlling her, but about a deep-seated fear of losing her. One night, about a month into our therapy, Sarah and I were sitting on the couch, a bottle of wine between us. we just finished one of our communication exercises, and the air felt clearer somehow, as if a fog had lifted. Jake, Sarah said softly, her fingers tracing the rim of her wine glass. I need you to know something. I turned to her, my heart rate picking up. What is it? She took a deep breath, her eyes meeting mine. I've been doing a lot of thinking these past few weeks. About us, about what I want, about what's really important. I nodded, not trusting myself to speak. And I've realized something, she continued. When I suggested an open marriage, I thought it was about freedom, about experiences. But I was wrong. I felt my breath catch in my throat. What do you mean? Sarah set her glass down, turning to face me fully. I was scared, Jake. Scared of getting older, of missing out on something. These past few weeks, talking to Dr. Rodriguez, talking to you, I've realized that what I have with you is more valuable than any experience I might be missing out on. Tears pricked at my eyes as she continued. I don't want an open marriage, Jake. I want you. Just you. Always you. I pulled her into my arms, holding her tight as tears fell freely down both our faces. I love you so much, Sarah. I whispered into her hair. She pulled back, cupping my face in her hands. I love you too. I am so sorry for all the pain I've caused. Can you forgive me? I leaned in, pressing my forehead to hers. There's nothing to forgive. We got through this together.